Alright guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3302. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. Today we're going to look at the mystery of the former Dying Rift. Jack Station is now repaired. The mystery of the unknown probe makes the BBC and there's a new expedition due to get underway. Elite is full of mysteries. Aliens, unknown artifacts, the missing and of course the former Dying Rift. For those of you that don't know what the Formidine Rift is, it's something straight out of one of the official Elite Dangerous novels, Elite Reclamation by Drew Wager. Now, this one really is a true mystery. No one knows exactly what the Formidine Rift is, or where it's located. But it does exist within the game, and it has been in there right since the game's release. Now, the story is starting to move forward on it, Many, many players on the Elite Dangerous forums have been searching for this, unravelling the various codes, the various hints, for a long time now trying to locate this. But it seems that now the mystery is starting to heat up somewhat. A little while ago, Drew Wager posted on Facebook some information, some tips, as to what's exactly going on. He just had a visit to the Frontier offices, where something that he couldn't reveal had been discussed, but he did say that the game would be afoot, as soon as a Galnet article is published referencing the Tyanisla Graveyard. Now, the graveyard is essentially a resting place for the rich and famous, where they are interred with their ship for prosperity. Frontier confirmed back at Lavecon that the graveyard will be added into the game very soon now, and the Galnet article goes on to talk about the graveyard specifically, stating that a new ship was actually left there very recently, and as it came to its final resting place, it broadcast a very strange and unusual message. Essentially, a series of letters that you can see on the screen now. Players have been heading to the forums to try and decode this, and they've essentially worked out that it's talking about a location near the Heart and Soul Nebula. This is a very strange and unusual mystery, because literally we know absolutely nothing about it. But if it's something that does interest you, there's a massive thread discussing it. And you can see that link to the forums in the video description. The recent community goal for the repair of Jack Station has now successfully completed. It reached Tier 8 after a little bit of modification by Frontier. The early stages of the community goal were very difficult and very hard to complete. And this was essentially due to the extensive distance between the inhabited areas of space and Jack Space. 22,000 light years, not a lot of people could make it there very fast. So Frontier went ahead and modified the tiers somewhat, knowing that they'd set them a little bit too high initially. Well, the community goal is successful, it reached the final tier, meaning that the station should shortly come back online. Now hopefully it's going to be a fully functional station with absolutely all the services we could ever dream of. That would be absolutely fantastic boon out there in the depths of space, something that all explorers would certainly want. There's still a second community goal at Shack Station, this one is a mining community goal, and it's to, for the construction of another outpost. Hopefully this marks the beginning of colonisation of the second inhabited bubble. The strange and so far undeciphered message that was received from the Unknown Probe recently has made the BBC. Their tech show Click recently did a small segment on the mystery. The show used elite dangerous footage from various YouTubers, including Meyer, Cookie Jarvis and myself. Despite ongoing and continued analysis of this message, it's still yet to be deciphered. It may be that there's still a piece missing from the puzzle, or it could be that we simply have to wait for the right time. But in either event, I hope it's not too long until we see further news on this. Players are coming together to organise a new exploration expedition. This one is a small worlds expedition, and they are currently in the final phases of planning their route. Once that's complete, they will open up to a registration where you'll be able to sign up to become a member of the fleet for this expedition. Now, what's unusual about this expedition is that it's for small ships only. If this sounds interesting to you, you can head on over to their Discord server, and there's a link to that in the video description. Last week, I touched on the subject of ship size, and it became a fairly discussed subject within the comments as well as elsewhere around the internet. Now, the image I used in that video showed the ASP in relation to a passenger liner, and it became a subject of debate as to whether the size of the ASP was actually accurate or not. Going on from that, we can have a look at some other ships now. YouTuber SceptreLT 
has made some fantastic videos that show the scout of the ships within Elite Dangerous. One shows the Federal Corvette and another shows the Sidewinder. You can see some clips of this on the screen now. And I find it always amazing to see even how large the smallest of ships is within the Elite Dangerous Galaxy. These videos were created using the Unreal 4 engine and I believe Scepter LT imported the uh, ships from Elite Dangerous and then textured them himself. And yep, he's done a very nice job of that. And whilst we're talking about YouTubers, I'd like to make another recommendation and this is for Shibuka. I've actually recommended him once before, but all his videos are always worth checking out. And I actually failed to mention last week that Shibuka is also a part of the production between the crossover series of Josh Hawkins and Turgeon. So my apologies for that. Now Gamescom is fast approaching and hopefully that means there should be a whole load of brand new Elite Dangerous news. I made a video a little while ago discussing some of the things I think they might be showing at Gamescom and if you haven't seen that yet you can go and check that video out. It's still a massive unknown for most of the things that are actually going to be shown there, although we do know one or two things because Frontier have actually said they're going to be showing them. But one thing that's still up for debate is whether or not they're going to show any content from Season 3. I might be completely wrong about this, but my suspicion is that we won't see anything at all on Season 3 at Gamescom, and that will be revealed at a later date. But who knows, we may be surprised. But whatever they reveal, I'm sure that one way or another, it's going to be quite interesting indeed. That then brings us to the end of this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.